Hello guys, in this video let's talk about multi-language in Laravel and we updated one of our courses on Laravel daily, multi-language Laravel and we updated it to Laravel 11 from Laravel 9. It was a course created two years ago and we updated it based on the request from one of the students so we keep updating older courses after comments like this one. So in this video I will show you what small details changed since Laravel 9 to Laravel 11 in working with languages and multi-language projects. And also we will discuss this problem that I published separately as a free tutorial, free article on Laravel Daily homepage. What is better, translations with text-based JSON keys or these PHP array-based keys? So let's actually start with that topic and let's actually skim through that article. So what is better, order, let me actually zoom that in so order or for example order with this syntax like users order or checkout order the problem with these json based keys is they don't have the context of meaning so to whoever would be translating those that word may mean multiple different things like order is a pretty multi-meaning word so for example in german it could be order a product and of course you can solve those differences by having separate texts but then your file gets really messy there's one json file with potentially hundreds of translations and it's pretty hard to put any kind of structure inside of it so it's good for smaller projects with pretty low risks of repeating keywords and names and easy to translate for non-technical people but for bigger projects it's better to have something like this a proper structure separated either by files like products php or even within the same file you can have multiple layers multiple levels of translations and then in the blade you call that by key i guess it's a bit harder for those non-technical people to read those translations as a PHP array, but I'm pretty sure it's easy for them to get used to it after translating a few things. And they also have the context, which page that word comes from. And then the second drawback of those JSON translations, not sure if you know, but for example, if you have both JSON file and then also translation for products PHP, you will get an error in Laravel because this tries to return the whole file instead of that word in JSON key. So yeah, all in all, I would vote for JSON files for smaller projects, but for more appropriate structure for bigger projects, I would vote for PHP array keys for translations. Now, what changed in Laravel 11 compared to Laravel 9? Not much, to be honest. I will read some parts from the updated course to emphasize those things. So first, lang folder. Over the years, it changed the location and how it works. It used to be resources slash lang. Then in Laravel 9 or 10, I don't remember, they moved it to just lang without resources. That said, resources lang still works if you wish to use that in older Laravel versions. So Laravel checks for both locations, it's fine. So I think that change was in Laravel 9, but in Laravel 10, they removed lang folder at all. So if you install fresh Laravel project, lang doesn't exist. So you need to specifically run PHP artisan lang publish, which will create the lang folder with en folder by default with default core Laravel translations for the beginning. The second change is usually with locales, with languages, we use middlewares to set the current locale. So the place to put those middlewares has changed. So it used to be app HTTP kernel PHP, and now it's in bootstrap app PHP that changed with Laravel 11. So if you want to append global middleware like setting the locale, that is the syntax. So for example, that set locale looks like this. You're setting the locale based on user language or default fallback English. And you set both for application and for carbon configuration. And the final change is also about middleware, how to redirect the unauthenticated users if for example session is expired you redirect to login with locale for example like this so in one of our demo projects in this course we redirect to slash en slash login for example so this is the new syntax middleware redirect guests to if you take a look at laravel documentation in laravel 10 it used to be in the file app http middleware authenticate which doesn't exist at all in laravel 11 that file so it used to be redirect to global function now in laravel 11 same thing same page on the docs use as bootstrap app file to do the same thing which may be just redirect to url or more complicated 
callback function. So yeah, a few of those changes from Laravel 9 to Laravel 11, not that many. And if you want the full course about multi-language updated to Laravel 11, this is the table of contents using a lot of different packages for many cases. So we're discussing models translation and also text translations in the very beginning static text, then switching between languages and also packages. I will put the link to the full course in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.